All right, guys, so up to this point, we have a view front end that we generated with view CLI. It's inside the client folder. We also have an express back end in the server folder, and we have them working together so we can add posts, we can remove them and so on. Um, now we want to get it prepared for deployment. We want to be able to build out our static assets from our development environment, uh, our dev server and put it into the public folder of the server and then push to Heroku. All right, so first step in doing so is going into our client folder and we want to create a special file called view.config.js and we want to put that in, right in the root. Okay, not in the source, but in the root. So new file, let's say view.config.js. All right, now if we look at our post service that we created, which is right here. We're making all of our requests to localhost 5000. Well, when, when we deploy to Heroku, we, we don't want to do that. We're not going to have a separate back end server with a front end and, and it's different than our development environment. So I want to be able to just make this to slash API slash posts. Okay, just like actually would just take off the slash. So API slash posts like that. So I'm going to save this. Now, if I go to, to our application and reload, we're going to get a 404 error because it doesn't know what the hell that that is. There's no, you know, it doesn't know where to look. So to fix that, we're going to go into our config that I just created. And inside here, I'm going to just bring in the path module from just a standard uh, node module and require just to manipulate file paths and stuff like that. So require path. Uh, and then we need to module dot exports an object with different configuration options. So we want to say dev server. And then we want to set up a proxy. Okay, and if you if you've done this in react, it's similar to in react, you would go to your package dot JSON and you'd add a proxy value and then put whatever localhost 5000 or whatever port you're using. Um, so what I want to do here is say for anything that is slash API, then I want to add a proxy uh, for localhost 5000. So target HTTP and then localhost port 5000. Okay, so let's save this. And now if we go back. Uh, let's actually reload the server. Just stop the view server here in the client and run it again. Let's go back and there we go. So now we don't have to actually specify localhost 5000 here. It's going to create a proxy for us. So that's the first step. Now, the next step is our build process. When we do NPM run build with Vue.js, what typically happens is it creates a folder called dist inside your your whatever your application is. Your in, the, in our case, it would be in the client. Now we want to change that. We don't want it to. We don't even want it to be called dist. We want it to be called, called public, and we also want it to go in the server folder so that our express server can use that as its static folder. OK, hopefully that makes sense. So to do that, we actually edit this file. So I'm going to put another value here of output. Dir, OK, so output directory, I'm going to use the path module. I'm just going to say path resolve and the current directory. So double underscore dir name. And where I want this to be created is going to be in that server folder. So we need to go outside of the client folder. So dot dot slash will bring us out into server and then into a folder called public. OK, so that will change that. And we just need to add a comma here. So let's save that. And now when we when we build out our assets, it should go in the server folder. And that's what we deploy to Heroku. So you see, we don't need any of this client stuff to be deployed to Heroku. All right. Um, let's see. I think that's all I want to do. Let's see, main.js. Uh, oh, you know what I wanted to do is change the page title because right now it's just client. Let's actually change that to, um, I don't know, 
full stack view and express. We'll just say like, um, I don't know, micro posts, not macro posts, whatever you want to put is fine. All right, so we'll save that. So now let's go ahead and try our build. Okay, and again, it should go into server public. So I'm going to go ahead and stop our, our client side server here. Um, stop that and let's do NPM run build. Okay, so building for production. And normally it would put it in the dist folder in your view app, but since we added that configuration, now if you look in our server, we have a public folder. And that is our static. Those are our static assets for our view application. So that's exactly what we want. Now, before we even attempt to deploy, there's there's uh, another thing we need to do inside of our server index.js because right now it doesn't know it doesn't know to look to that um, that public folder. And then we also need to be able to handle a single page application. All right, because in If we're not using a front end framework, if we go to like, I don't know, test dot com slash hello, what it's going to do is it's going to look for uh, an actual file or folder called hello. But when we use React or Vue or Angular, any any kind of single page application that we build the routing system and we're by the way, we're not using any separate routes. So this I mean, we don't, wouldn't technically have to do this for for our application. But if you were to create any kind of routes in a single page application, you'd want to do this on your back end so that it handles this correctly and it just directs it to the index HTML instead of looking for the actual hello folder or file that doesn't actually exist. So those two things we need to add and we only want this done in production. So what I'm going to do is go right below here, right above where we create the port. And let's just say handle uh, production. So we just want to test to see if we're actually in production and we can do that by saying if process dot env if our environment dot node underscore env. So if our node environment is equal to production and as soon as we deploy to Heroku, this is true. Then we want to set our static folder by saying app dot use. Uh, and then we say express dot static and we want the current directory. So double underscore dir name and let's just actually we'll just concatenate. We could use the path module, but I'm just going to just say the current directory and then slash public like that. So it's going to look at that folder as our static folder. And then to handle the single page application, what we want to do is say app dot get. Okay, so for any routes, basically want to say for any routes, so I'm going to put an expression in here by doing uh, uh, double slash and then dot asterisk. So what this is going to do is it's going to if it's going to refer to any route at all. Uh, wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, never mind. All right. So it's going to refer to any route at all, but it's very important that you put this below up here because you don't want when we hit API slash post, that's an actual route that we want to hit. We don't want to just direct it um, to index HTML. So we're going to go ahead and add to this a function with request response, just like we would any other route. And we just want to basically send it to the index HTML so we can say res dot send file and pass in a double underscore dir name. And let's just concatenate on just like we did above, except we want to send it to public slash index dot HTML, which is right here. If we look in our public folder in our static assets for our view app, we have an index HTML. So that's basically what we want to load. All right. So now what I'm going to do is go my, my view server, my view dev server is stopped. I'm going to go back to my back end server, which is still running, and I'm going to go ahead and stop that. 
and this is I'm currently in the root. You can see the server and client folders. So now I just want to do a git add all and git commit. You can do these in separate commands if you want. I just think this is a little quicker. And let's say um, let's say added static folder and prepared SPA, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We just want to make sure we, we have uh, an updated commit. All right. So now our, as far as Git goes, we're ready to push to Heroku, but we need to get that set up now. I actually I think on this machine I should have Heroku installed. Let me just say Heroku version. Yeah, so I, I have it installed on. But if you don't, what you'll need to do, first of all, create a Heroku account if you don't have one. Uh, OK, so so you go to Heroku.com. If you don't have an account, just create one. It's free. Um, and then you need to install Heroku. So let's say um, Heroku install. So this will show you what to do if you're on Windows, you know, you can download the installer, Mac OS, download the installer, Ubuntu, you can do sudo snap install classic Heroku. Just go through. Uh, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then once you do that, you need to log in. Okay, so let's see. I don't know if I'm logged in or not. I'm going to say Heroku. I don't think I am. So Heroku log in. So let's see, that's the account that I want to use. And then my password. I think that's it. Yep. So now I'm logged in to Heroku through my CLI and I want to now do Heroku create. OK, so that will actually create a Heroku app. Um, now, if we were to go to this and we can actually do that by saying Heroku open it's just going to be the standard welcome page um, there's a couple steps that we need to do to push our application to 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 this um, to the server or or what do they call them um, what the hell they call them dinos or something but we want to now go to our Heroku panel and reload and you'll see something that got added there was a vast earth right that's the one that was added so vast earth it'll give it a crazy name like this and we want to go into that and we can see like all our analytics and stuff. But we want to go to deploy and go down here. So we've already logged in. I've already done all my Git stuff and committed and all that. Everything's ready to go. But we need to add this remote repository. So I'm going to grab this right here, this Git remote. And then we're going to add this or run this command. So let's go down here. I'll clear that out and paste that in. OK, so we'll run that. It looks like uh, I, I do have an older version of Heroku, but it should be fine. Uh, so now let's now that we've added that we've already I already have everything in my local repository. If I do a git status, you'll see nothing to commit. Everything is ready to go. So I simply want to do a git push Heroku to Heroku to the master branch. And that should push everything. Except for our client folder, because we put that in the git ignore and except for any node modules folders. It's going to build that stuff on its own. And that's what I love about Heroku. It makes it makes deploying node apps very, very easy. All right, so let's let's uh, wish for luck here and let's do Heroku open. And there it is. We're now deployed. OK, so let's test it out. This is post three. OK, it gets added. I can double click and delete. If I go to slash API slash posts, everything is there. So we're now completely deployed. We're using the same database, the same MLAB database. A lot of times um, you could create a, uh, a file for uh, that holds your your local database, you know, for your development and then your production database. You might want to um, have two separate ones, 
But um, yeah, so that's it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully it made some sense. I will put a link to um, uh, the, repos the GitHub repository. The GitHub repository will include the client file. You just don't want to push that to Heroku. Okay, um, but that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.